When it comes to sustainability reporting, the three most important things for audit committees to be aware of today are, one, there's a substantial intersection between sustainability and financial reporting. That means that even if this hasn't been an issue for the audit committee yet, it soon will be. Two is that more and more, the expectation, whether that's from regulators, investors, or others, is that sustainability reporting is being subjected to the same level of rigor as financial reporting. And three is that in most cases, that isn't where things are today. For the most part, sustainability teams are driving reporting largely independent of other functions like finance and risk. That isn't a criticism. The way things are operating has made sense until now. The issue is that as we move from a voluntary reporting regime to a mandatory one, the reporting infrastructure needs to adapt. And for that reason, there are five key questions that we believe audit committees should be asking today. The first one is how we've assessed which parties are relying on the information that we're currently reporting, what they're relying on it for, and what risks that could give rise to. Securities commissions are already requiring companies to make adjustments, and increasingly they're asking about the alignment between assumptions and sustainability reports and the ones that underpin the financial statements. That's on top of lawsuits, shareholder activism, and enforcements from the Competition Bureau here in Canada, the SEC in the US, shareholders, and others. Because of that, it's important to understand what's at stake if an error does arise. The second question is, how do we know that our reporting is materially correct today? Some of the areas where we commonly see issues are things like data errors from hard-coded numbers in spreadsheets or data that came from third parties without verification. Missing information. For instance, when system reports are used that exclude a portion of the population because it's tracked manually or in another system. Scoping errors, where entities that should be included in the group's emissions are left out. And unqualifying offsets when emission credits that have been applied to reduce emissions, but they don't have documentation or meet the right criteria to be an offset. These might not seem like complicated errors when it comes to reporting, but we see them often, and in many cases, their impact is material. For that reason, it's important to understand how deficiencies like these or others are being detected through things like well-documented processes and controls or through testing done by internal or external audit. The third question is, if we're getting independent assurance today, do we know what adjustments, if any, are being made? By understanding any issues that were identified during testing, we can start to get a sense of where there may be gaps in our reporting process and whether those gaps could be significant or pervasive. The fourth question is, which areas of our reporting are subject to the highest risk of misstatement and should any of those be paired back? More and more, we're seeing companies risk assess disclosures and in some cases, pair them back to allow time for controls to be matured while reporting continues to be voluntary. The fifth and final question we believe audit committees should be asking today is, what do we expect our operating model for reporting and related board governance to look like in three years time and what are our plans to get there? This is one of the biggest challenges that we see management teams facing today, how to define the roles that sustainability, finance, and other parts of the organization are going to play in end state reporting, and what steps need to take place in order to get us there. To learn more about these questions and how audit committees can be prepared for the reporting journey ahead, please reach out to either of us or to any of your local Deloitte contacts. Thank you.